prepared the environment. He prepares our mindset. He prepares our hearts and our, our, our spirit. And now he begins to fashion our lives so that it gets bent back toward his will. Uh, he fixes and resolves himself. Somebody say focus, focus. Uh, in the preparation process is where God begins to bring it into focus. It's been blurry, but now God's going to cause it to be in focus. And God, this word preparation means to make suitable. Huh. I, I, I don't want to offend anyone. I don't want to say anything that would sound demeaning. Uh, I don't want to say anything that would uh, look like I'm, I'm making either a comparison or uh, a critical uh, type of um, uh, statement towards your life. Uh, but the truth of the matter is for what God called you to uh, uh, heretofore, you wasn't suitable yet. <laughs> You know, sometimes it's the devil, sometimes it's the timing, and sometimes it's your appropriateness. <laughs> sometimes we just have not become appropriate enough for the purpose. Are y'all with me? <laughs> I, know, I know some of you, this thing is ringing, do something. Uh, I need to change mics. I don't think it's changed batteries. But uh, we, sometimes it's about, it's, it's going crazy. Sometimes it's, we're not adapted to what it is that God is trying to do. We, we, we don't have the experience and we're not well able to do what it is that God wants us to accomplish because what God needs to do in us is he needs to upgrade us. The way you were worked for last season. But it's not going to work in this season coming. Are y'all with me? There are some things that uh, we want to do. We, there are some things that we want to accomplish. There are some things that God wants to do with us. And uh, we're not going to be able to get it done unless God upgrades us. Amen. Amen. And the problem is that we don't like to be upgraded because if we upgrade, then we've got to renew all of our applications. Uh, there are times when, uh, you know, I'm a technology guy that don't really know how to use technology, but I like it. And so whenever there is something else, just mute them. Just mute them. We're doing too much moving behind me. Just mute, mute them. I'm trying to preach. Just mute them. We, 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 there are some things that we want to do and some things we want to accomplish. And uh, we, we, we need to be upgraded. And then it ain't on. Okay. Then we need to be upgraded. Yeah. And uh, I threw that and I thought, Lord, have mercy. Uh, he could have been over there thinking about a play or something. I didn't want, just wanted to make sure. But there's, a, there's times when, when we want to upgrade or we want, we want to operate in this new dimension, but we don't want to take the time to download the applications again. Because when you upgrade, application starts over. Because now God has to prepare you for your next level of devils. Here, here, here's how Jeremiah said it, chapter 12, verse 5. Jeremiah said, you know, if you can't handle the footmen, what you going to do when the horses and the chariots come? Don't you realize that for most of us, we ain't even seen Goliath yet. This still the lion and the bears and the small wolves that's trying to come after the things that God has put into our care and into our lives. What are we going to do when a uh, real trial comes? 
I had somebody tell me the other day, they're about 17, they said, you know, I just been through too much. <laughs> I just dropped myself. I said, well, you might as well just grab a rope and let it go because you 17. Slap three people say 17, 17. You ain't even seen nothing yet. You ain't even had a late bill notice yet. 17, you still answering block calls. Because <laughs> you know, once you get over 35, it's blocked. It'd be like, uh uh. <laughs> the devil is like, like the bill gonna disappear because you didn't answer the phone. Ha uh ha, -huh, you didn't catch me. God is making us meet because what we're going to have to deal with, turn it down just a little bit, Ron. God, what God is trying to do for us is he's trying to get us, here, here it is, so I can, I, I done messed up. I done joked for three minutes. I done messed up. All because I threw that microphone to smooth over there. God's trying to make us useful. That's, that's all he's really trying to do. He's trying to cause our lives to come to a place where we're full of use. You, you, you got to be honest. There's been some days we ain't no good for nobody. It's, it's just been some days where we haven't been who we've been called. And so God is trying to get us into a place where every day we can be useful, full of use. We, we're so, use of, we're, we're so uh, acquainted with being abused and misused that now we're almost afraid of being useful. Because usefulness is a place, watch this, of vulnerability. Useful people get taken advantage of and don't give a flip. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. Useful people are the type of people that are called on to do everything all the time. And in most cases, it ain't even good enough, but you called me back again to do it. I thought I wasn't good enough the last time. Why'd you call me this time? But I've got to do it with a smile on my face and joy in my heart. Why? Because God is using me. It really ain't you. You might be the mouth that God is speaking to, Bishop, but it ain't you. It's the Holy Ghost using me. And I'm glad about it because I gave a whole lot of time to the devil and this is the only way I can get him back. Somebody shout hallelujah. Ain't no sense in you worrying about being vulnerable. You've been pimped for a long time anyway. The devil has done whatever he wanted to in our lives. He's taking us up Side down. Watch this. And we liked it. We got saved, full of the Holy Ghost, and we go back to it. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> I'm the only one that done went back to visit my old boyfriend. I'm the only one that done went back and hang out with the devil again. I'm the only one that done slipped back and done said something in compliance with the devil. Why are you with the devil right now if you acting like that ain't you because you lying right now. So to be used of God ought to be a state of appreciation. You ought to be grateful that God still deals with your raggedy tail. When I know I got an assignment, when I know there's something God wants me to do on a particular day, it almost brings tears to my eyes because I say, God, you still fooling with me? Because see, it ain't your actions that God even deal with. It's your heart. See, because the truth of the matter is, some of y'all's holiness is just really a lack of opportunity. 
it ain't really holiness it's just you didn't get an opportunity to do it so we can't act like we so holy because in my heart in my mind in my wish factor in my dreams in my contemplation in my imagination I'm as perverted as I've ever been but God didn't give me opportunity it wasn't my holiness it was his mercy and his grace and then he turns around and says I want to use you God's trying to get us well for his use the word that blows my mind with God is that in this whole place of preparation he's making us profitable we've got a business that has an investor that has far exceeded our return on investment budget Let me, let me say that again. We have a business that has an investor who's far exceeded our return on investment budget. There's no way we can be profitable if we have to pay back the return on the investment. But what he said was, I'm going to invest everything you need. And when I've done all of that, we're even. And whatever you make belongs to you. Are y'all with me? We have a God who's investing everything that we need and the only thing that he wants from us is our full effort not to bring him profit but to be profitable to somebody else that somebody else's life gets to prosper because of what he's invested in you and when he looked at you you're really not a good investment But God's making us profitable for somebody else. Because sometimes we get to thinking we're profitable to God, but God can't get no profit from us because he's got everything. Already, this this word preparation, we said last week that it it, it meant to be alert. And uh, one word that I did not say, this preparation gives us speedy readiness. I I broke that whole alert and speedy readiness down because what I wanted to say was expeditious alertness. But it's speedy readiness is what God gives us. He calls us into a place where uh, we begin to operate where in the spirit where it's almost natural. Your responses are spiritual like natural. Your, 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 your prayer life is spiritual like natural your, your praise is spiritual but it's like it's natural it's like, it's like you don't know nothing else My, I am spiritual slap three people and say I am spiritual and, uh, being spiritual tell your neighbor being spiritual is natural for me uh, it's who I am it's what I do it's my makeup it's my DNA I don't even know how to be carnal no more you got to prophesy to yourself my mind ain't running around town my mind mind is on the things of God my mind is on his work my mind is on his word my mind is on his love my mind is on his power I'm not confused no more tell somebody I am spiritual God is bringing us into a place of speedy readiness where you are the epistle written by God you don't have to read one you are one alacritous is what we said, we have to become alacritous where we've got this cheerful willingness on the inside of us that we're expecting God to do something and we want God to do something and when he does it, we are ready for him to use us to get it done. That's a shift, see? See, because normally our expectancy is for God to move 
for us. But God is maturing you now. That your expectancy now is for God to move through you. I don't want to become a millionaire. I want to sow a million dollars. Uh, you see the shift. <laughs> I don't... I don't want a new job. I want to create jobs for others. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help somebody. Where the shift comes where God uses you as the distribution center and you're not the consumer anymore. Cheerful willingness where God can use me. But then this morning, I ran across a word that's connected to preparation in its root state. And it's the word enthusiasm. <laughs> enthusiasm means to have fervor. Uh, in other words, that means you're dedicated and committed. Now here's the problem with dedication and commitment. It's not really seen when things are going well. <laughs> dedication and commitment can't be measured when you're happy. They can't be measured when things are favorable for you. Dedication and commitment can only be measured when there's adversity. When you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. When you're happy and we know it, sit on down. When we happy and we know it, and your face will surely show it. When we happy and you know it, serve right now. Yes, it, it means, enthusiasm means to have an, a special interest. That, that means to pay attention and to concentrate on it. So now I'm, I'm, my whole enthusiasm is changing because now you're talking about I'm not running around screaming because it's blessing me. I have to now show dedication and commitment, attention and concentration on the very thing that might sometimes be vexing me. When it don't feel good or I can't see how it's going to bring any level of fruition because I remember my mind is finite and limited. That's why God gave Paul a thorn in the flesh. He said, I'm going to bring you up here and show you something, but I surely don't want you to thank you all that. And quit saying you got a thorn in the flesh because most of us ain't even seen enough to get that. That's, that's proclivity. That's habit. That's issues. This word enthusiasm, it, this is what did it. It means passion. To have a hunger and a thirst and a craving for something. God, as he's connecting us to our purpose, is preparing us along the way and taking us through process. So before we get too far into purpose, we are addicted to it. So that when the tough get going, we don't get to running. Slap somebody and say, I don't give a flip. I'm walking in purpose. I'm walking in purpose. Purpose is tough. Because purpose comes with a lot of adversity. And purpose, because it's so demanding on your anointing, it's draining. And sometimes I'd rather forfeit purpose than to deal with what I'm dealing with. I'm talking about me. I said, I. 
because my passion isn't where it used to be because there's days when the fun has gone. It's not a job. Watch this. But it's work. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 47 through 48. I'm about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this 1046. If you do not serve the Lord your God with joy and enthusiasm for the abundant benefits you have received, you will serve your enemies who the Lord will send against you. You will be left hungry, thirsty, naked, and lacking in what? Everything. The Lord will put an iron yoke on your neck, oppressing you harshly until what? It has, until he has what? Destroyed you. This is because th the word that I want, I, let, me, let me just finish this. Nehemiah chapter four, verse six. This is, this is a couple of verses down from the verse we started with when this whole thing about purpose and, and being fortified, when this whole thing came to pass. This is four verses away. In the New Living, it says, at last the wall was completed to half its height around the entire city. Remember, now four verses ago, he was mocking us us slap somebody and say I ain't before verses away I ain't before verses away I if I can hold on three more verses the fourth verse gonna bless me he said listen it said at last the wall was completed to half its height around the entire city for the people had worked with what enthusiasm and the King James is in the amplified it says with a perfect heart and mind. They had a heart and a mind to work. This word enthusiasm implies, remember I told you, fervor and interest and passion. Uh, and it brings us to a place uh, that I'll end in Colossians chapter 1. You can play something right here, 9 through 14. I shouldn't have to read it because you all should be able to recite it with me because you read this every morning. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen, here we go, with all might according to his glorious power, watch this, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness synonym for enthusiasm giving thanks unto the father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light here's what God is doing and I'll pick back up on this when we give thanks somebody say gratitude Remember in Deuteronomy it says for the abundant blessings or the abundant favor and the abundancy that you have already received. See most of us are looking ahead to what God can do for us but we're forgetting what God has done for us. And so we're serving to get rather serving because of what he's done. We live for him because he redeemed us. We love him because he first loved us us everything we do for in through God is because of what he's already done in through and for us so our gratitude isn't based on what he's going to do it's based on what he's already done but what he's already done gives him reputation about what he's getting ready to do so to give thanks because he's made us meet, it means he qualifies us. That means he fits us to a purpose. He makes us strong and he enables us. It means that we're able to share and take part of what he's already released into the earth for those who have purpose. Watch this, of the inheritance. This word means, uh, it, it, it speaks of purpose, chances, and watch this, and breakthroughs. The inheritance that he's getting us ready for are purposes, chances or opportunities and breakthroughs of the saints in light in other words those that are manifesting the kingdom isn't that good news all of this preparation is for purpose opportunities 
and breakthroughs so that we can be part of the group that's manifesting the kingdom that's what you've been reading every day God you're enabling and strengthening me and qualifying me to manifest the kingdom because you're going to enforce it with purpose opportunities and breakthroughs but the only way I realize it is if I serve him with enthusiasm so it's been my theme and we get out of here and we leave and we give quickly and y'all run downtown and we get rolling and y'all start right back again at least there ain't no sun I want to pray for individuals who feel like for work for jobs for marriages for children for ministry for your own life even that you're beginning to run out of gas and lose your passion for your entrepreneurship for ideas innovations you it's just been a little weary but you know God's got something more for you and you need that passion revived you need to be re-steamed recharged relit the wick is there but the fire is not burning or the fire is burning dimly and God needs to light it again this whole week has been about passion and burnout and I want to pray for you if you've been on the verge of burnout but you know God's got more. I know I'm supposed to turn around and lay hands, but if you're in that choir, I want you to come down. This is an altar call. Pam can handle this one until I'm done. If you, I only come down if you're, if you're talking about burnout, if you've been on that verge and you need that resurgence. I want to lay hands on you. And for those who are not experiencing that now, you're human. That moment will come. Hear the word of the Lord. We all get weary. Even Jesus laid his head down and went to sleep. Was refreshed. He got up early in the morning to pray. Burnout. I'm not saying you will, you, you, you've whittled out. I'm not saying you're giving up. I'm not saying that stuff. I ain't saying that. When I go to Florida, I do just like this to my daddy. strategic trips y'all call them vacations because I find an hour to go to the beach it's Jacksonville it's not a vacation it's an outlet where I plug in for a minute so when I come back I got something left because I left you depleted I need that Everybody needs that. Everybody goes through that moment where who I was, I, I just, it's not there. And then God has the nerve to call me higher, to lay more responsibility on me, and I'm not even operating in what I thought I had before. So this simply is a prayer of agreement for passion and enthusiasm so that God will fight for me so that the yoke that's on me is his yoke, his burden it's easy and it's light it's not the yoke of the enemy it's not a yoke of iron that holds me down it's not my enemies, my thoughts my actions